the decisive battle of Ain Jalad against the Tatars, Mongols. On Friday, 25 Ramadan 658 AH, corresponding to 03-09, 1260. The great Tatar Mongol army came, the army that brought down more than half of the Islamic world and half of Europe arrived. the Islamic forces began to descend to the plain of Ain Jalad. The front of the army did not come down at once, but came down in stages. The first battalion appeared and they were wearing red and white, as if they were in a military parade. Then a second battalion appeared dressed in yellow, a third and a fourth battalion. The Mongol leader, Kipukanuan, was amazed and amazed at the intensity of the organization, arrangement and strength of these battalions as he was used to seeing Muslims trembling in fear in front of the Mongols. After the arrival of the advanced army of the Muslims, led by Rukhan al-Din Baybars, the Mamluk military drumming squad began beating drums and blowing trumpets. These strikes were for specific orders. The army was receiving orders through these sounds of drums that the enemies did not know. Thus, Quits was able to lead the battle from a far place so he could fill the gaps and move the battalions as he wanted. Also, these powerful voices were causing terror to the Mughal army. These drums and trumpets used to act as radios in battles. Despite the organization and arrangement in which the Muslim army battalions were distinguished, the Mongol leader found that their number was few, so he decided to enter all his army into the Ain Jalad plain. And this is what Quits wanted who planned to set the Mongol army into an ambush. Terrible hordes of Tatars, shouting their terrifying cries, rained down on the front of the Muslims. Huge numbers of knights were looting the land towards the Islamic forces. The outstanding leader, Rukhan al-Din Baybars, and with him the Muslim heroes stood with an amazing steadfastness, and they did not retreat. God Almighty gave them serenity and security, and it was as if they saw the huge Tatar legions as a small handful of men. God says in the Quran, And remember, when he showed them to you when you met, as few in your eyes, and he made you appear as few in their eyes, so that Allah might accomplish a matter already destined, and to Allah are all matters returned, and full, 4 to 4. Prince Baybars gave the signal for his forces to attack, and the voices rose. The forces of the Muslims were mixed with the forces of the Tatars, and soon the body parts were scattered and the blood flowed. The battle raged in moments, and everyone saw from the horror what they had never seen in their lives. It was one of the largest sights in the history of the earth. Wutaz was watching the situation from afar until the right moment came. He wanted to drain the Tatar army as much as possible. Minutes and hours passed like days and months. The time has come to implement the second part of the Islamic military plan. The drums sounded certain beats to deliver a message to Baybars to begin to retreat in order to deceive the Mongols and drag them into the Ain Jalat plain, where Quits set ambushes against the Tatars. The Muslims began to retreat gradually, the Tatars believed that the Muslim army had begun to flee, and Kibuganoin began to enter with all his army into the depth of the Ain Jalat plain. Kibuganoin was supposed to leave reserve forces at the entrance to the plain to prevent the Islamic army from encircling the Tatar army. 
The totter mentality has stopped sound thinking at this sensitive time. But this was a measure from God Almighty. The invaders, no matter how powerful they are, the number of their armies, and the variety of their weapons, they will never deviate from the will of God Almighty. The entire Tatar Mongol army entered the depth of the Ain Jalat plain. Quits gave the start signal for the disembarkation of the Islamic forces and battalions hiding in the forests. Within a few minutes, the Islamic forces surrounded the Tatar army. Kipoka discovers Quitsi's plan, but it's too late. The Tatars were besieged in the Ain Jalap plain. The bitter struggle has begun. A fierce war erupted between the Muslim army and the Tatar army. The Tatars put pressure on the Muslim army and they were able to penetrate the facilitator of the army. The Muslim army fell into a crisis due to the retreat of the left wing in their army. Quits was watching the progress of the battle and directing the battalions to fill the gaps, but the army's left side continued to retreat. The situation became very difficult. Quits found only one solution. He decided to take himself to the battlefield. It must be proven to his soldiers that death for the sake of God is the demand of every honest Muslim, and he must be a role model for his soldiers. Quits went down to the battlefield, took off his helmet and threw it on the ground, expressing his longing for martyrdom and his lack of fear of death. Then he called out at the top of his voice, saying, O oh, Islam, O oh, Islam. The Muslim soldiers were surprised by the presence of the leader, King al Muzaffar. Quits among them. The issue was clear to all people, the issue is Islam, the cause of Islam. The issue is not to preserve positions, and a struggle for power. The fight was for the purpose of jihad and the cause of God. Fighting erupted in the plain of Ain Jalad, the killing increased, and the voices became louder. During the fighting, Wutuz's horse was hit by an arrow from the Tatars, and the horse died. Quits went down to the ground on foot, and the Tatars fought without a horse. He did not hesitate, he did not retreat from his heels, and he was not anxious about his life. One of the princes saw him finding a foot, so he went to give him his horse. But Quits refused and said, Keep your horse with you. If I die, I will go to heaven. These attitudes towards Quitas led to the enthusiasm of the Muslim soldiers, so they attacked the Tatar army with a strong and comprehensive attack, 
until they were able to defeat them. It was a difficult day for the Tatar Mongol armies. Jamal al-Din Akash al-Shamsi was able to reach the commander of the Mongol army, Kitpuganuan, and fought him until he killed him. Kitpua Enween fell dead, the Mughal armies collapsed and began to flee. The Tatars and the military Mongol brigades continued to flee to the north, and the Muslim army pursued them, even to the Bisan area in Palestine. And another battle began in Basin. Historians said that it is more severe than Angelat. It was the most difficult moment for the Islamic forces. Wittes set out to motivate his soldiers, asking them to be steadfast. Then Quich shouted out loud, Wad Islama, Wad Islama, Wad Islama. He said it three times. Then he raised his head and said, O oh God, victory for your servant, Quetuz, over the Tatars. And does God Almighty leave those who turn to him and call upon him? This will never happen, God Almighty says. They have not appraised Allah with true appraisal. While the earth entirely will be within his grip on the day of resurrection, and the heavens will be folded in his right hand, exalted is he and high above what they associate with him. I as Zoomer 67. God Almighty responded to the supplication of quits. After a few moments, the soldiers of the Tatar army began to be defeated by the Muslim army, and the number of dead among the ranks of the Tatars increased. The banner of Islam rose, and the banner of the Tatars collapsed. The moment that Muslims have been waiting for for more than 40 years has come, God Almighty says, And on that day the believers will rejoice. With the help of God he helps whom he wills, and he is the mighty, the most merciful. Al Rum colon 4 5. The surprise in the battle was that no one from the Tatar army was left in Palestine. The entire Tatar Mongol army was annihilated. The victorious Mujid quits got off his horse and began to pray, thank God. Huatuz was neither arrogant nor arrogant. He did not feel that he had done anything, but thanked God for his victory, and gave him wisdom and opinion and strength on the battlefield. Here is the puzzle. To realize that you are a servant of God Almighty, 
You are not helped except by His victory, and you are not saved except by His mercy, and you do not move except by His will. The Almighty says in His noble book, And we guided him to the two paths, al Balad 10. A person chooses. Which was not in comfortable conditions. He did not rule the country when it was strong, he did not become a leader, and he had a lot of money. Almost all circumstances were against him, but he sought God's help with sincerity. the liberation of Damascus and Syria, and the expulsion of the Mongols from the Middle East and the Levant, the mission of the Islamic army that wiped out the Tatar army in Palestine has not ended. The Mongols and Tatars are present in Damascus, Aleppo, Homs, and others. Quits moved with his army towards Damascus, despite the extreme fatigue of the Battle of Ain Jalad. Wittes wants to liberate the whole of the Levant from the Mongols, Damascus was the first station to fall under the control of the Tatars. Quit sent a message to the people of Damascus, telling them that the Muslims had eliminated the Tatar army in Palestine. The morale of the people of Damascus rose, so they attacked the Tatar soldiers in Damascus, stormed the prisons, and freed the Muslim prisoners from the hands of the Tatars. The people of Damascus attacked all the traitors who cooperated with the Tatars. The Mongols and traders from the city began to flee from Damascus. The occupation of Damascus ended in less than two days and Quits arrived in Damascus on the 30th of Ramadan and found that the city had been liberated and there were no totters left in it. The streets of Damascus were decorated and men, women and children went out to welcome the victorious hero Quits. It was one of the happiest days for Muslims, 40 years ago. God says in his noble book, Say, by the grace and mercy of God, then let them rejoice. It is better than what they gather. Eunice, 58. This is the joy of victory for the pride of Islam and Muslims. Qutuz's army entered Damascus, and the situation quickly stabilized, and Qutuz gave safety to Christians and Jews in Damascus. Quits ordered the appointment of a judge to rule between the litigants and to give the right to its owners. The next day coincided with Eid al-Fitr, the greatest holiday for Muslims. It was not only Eid al-Fitr, but also a victory feast. Quits began sending an army led by al-Zahir Baybars to liberate the rest of the cities of the Levant and expel the Tatars and Mongols from them. Baybars stormed the Tatar camps and headquarters in the city of Homs, then headed to the city of Aleppo. The Tatars fled from Aleppo like terrified mice. Thus, Damascus, Homs, Hama, and Aleppo were liberated within weeks. After the liberation of the cities of the Levant from the Tatars, Quits announced the unification of Egypt and the Levant into one state. Thus the situation stabilized in the Levant and Palestine. The Tatars, the Mongols were crushed by a crushing defeat, and the people woke up from the disturbing nightmare that had befallen them in all the past years. The Battle of Ain Jalad had many results including the liberation of all Bilad al-Sham from the Tatars, Mongols, then the liberation of the coastal cities in Bilad al-Sham from the Crusader Emirates such as Beirut, Acre, Sidon, Latakia, Antioch, and others. The Battle of Ain Jalad was a reason for the entry of many Tatars to the religion of Islam. Some of the Tatars had converted to the religion of Islam previously, but after the Battle of Ain Jalad, the number of the Muslim Tatars increased, and among them was the cousin of Hilagu, and his name was Baraka Khan, and he is the leader of the Tatar Golden tribe, and Baraka Khan, he was staying with his tribe in the regions of southern Russia, such as Kazan, Astrakhan, Primia, and northern Chechnya. Baraka Khan cooperated with the Muslims against the Mongols. The defeat of the Tatars in Ain Jalad caused the fading and dispersal of the power of the Tatars and their inability to attack Europe again, and the Tatars also could not maintain what they occupied from Eastern Europe. The Muslim Saif al-Din Qutuz was a role model for heroes, an example of faith, courage, honesty, will, 
justice, and morals. True history only glorifies heroes. Putas, may God have mercy on him, died only 50 days after the victory of Ain Jalap, and although he ruled for a short period, he was one of the greatest men on earth. The clear fact remains that the value of men and heroes is not measured by longevity, abundance of money, or vastness of authority. Rather, the correct criterion is in the immortal works that change the face of history and the geography of the world.